All right, folks, um, yesterday, uh, the folks at New York Magazine dropped this story that conservative media has been pushing all around. It says Black Lives Matter has secretly bought a $6 million house. Allies and critics alike have questioned where the organization's money has gone. It's written by a Sean Campbell. In the article, uh, they talk about uh, this particular home, uh, and they say uh, how it was purchased. Uh, and uh, all those different things along those lines. And so the 6,500 square foot of home, more than a half dozen bedrooms, bathrooms, several fireplaces, a sound stage, a pool and a bungalow, uh, and parking for more than 20 people. Uh, and it was purchased for nearly $6 million in cash in October 2020 uh, with money that had been donated to Black Lives Matter uh, GNF, the Global Network Foundation. Now, one of the things that conservative media has been focused on, and, uh, and you've had a lot of back and forth, a lot of attacks and things going on, people demanding where did the money go, questioning things along those lines. Well, uh, Patrice Cullors actually uh, responded. She posted this on her Instagram page. So I want to read this. She said, yesterday's article in New York Magazine is a despicable abuse of a platform that's intended to provide truthful information to the public. Journalism is supposed to be to mitigate harm and inform our communities. Um, um, the that fact that a reputable publication would allow a reporter with a proven and very public bias against me and other black leaders to write a piece filled with misinformation, innuendo and incendiary opinions is disheartening and unacceptable. To clarify again, the property the reporter addressed was purchased in 2020 as a space where those within the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation and broader movement community could work, create content, host meetings, and foster creativity. Although I cannot speak to how BLM GNF uses the property currently as I left the organization last year in May, it was purchased to be a safe space for black people in the community. The reason it wasn't announced prior is not nefarious as the headline infers, the property needed repairs and renovation. I do not own the property. I have never lived there and made that clear to the reporter. I want to be clear. While I will always see myself as a part of the BLM community, I am no longer in leadership and I am not a part of any decision-making processes within the foundation. I have never misappropriated funds and it pains me that so many people have accepted that narrative without the presence of tangible truth or facts. Nevertheless, this will soon be made clear upon the release of the BLM 990s. To those within our movement and others who have looked to me for leadership, I'm sorry you have consistently had to engage with this kind of hateful and erroneous content. I admittedly have not always responded and I know my silence has contributed to doubt. I apologize if it has caused um, you harm or of any kind, but I'm asking you all to understand the enormous pressure and fear that comes with living under the constant threat of white supremacist terror and real threats on my life and those of people I love. But I'm no longer letting fear hold me back from calling out these attacks. What's happening to me and to our movement is both racist and sexist. This is bigger than me. It's about a long history of attacking black people and black women specifically, creating unsafe conditions for us and our families, scrutinizing our every move publicly and privately in ways that are unfair and unjust. It's dangerous and we should all be trying to stop it, interrupt it, protest it. Still, we have to remember that we're a part of a legacy of freedom fighters and that comes with the hardest of moments as well as many victorious days. Elders in the movement whose name we now chant were at times named enemies of the state, were shunned by the communities and attacked viciously without, without relent by the opposition. I have spent the last 22 years of my life in service to black people and others suffering under the weight of oppression. I'm privileged to have led work that resulted in successful ballot measures. We've stopped jails from being constructed and created civilian oversight, the largest sheriff's department in the world, LA County. We've supported families against sheriff's violence and police violence. We built community gardens and so much more. However, the conditions of our people still require more, more money, more time, more care and resources, and we should, can, and will do more. I understand some of the concerns and critiques coming from within and outside our movement. No community organizer is above criticism. In fact, I'm grateful for it, especially, uh, um, uh, first of all, no community organizer is above criticism. In fact, I am grateful for it, especially when it's about helping people do and be better. But what has happened to me is not about accountability or healing. It's about destroying my life and destroying a powerful mo uh, movement. Despite all of this, I will continue fighting for my people and our movement will continue on. They can't kill it. We are still winning and will continue to win. But we're also still learning and growing. I'm still learning and growing and I'm asking you all, my 
our community for a measure of grace, yours in loves and service, Patrice. So here's what I think is, here's what I think is, is, is happening here, folks, that's a, a problem. And, and this is, I want, to, I want the panel to deal with this here because I think it's important. Um, and, and, and that is, there are several tentacles, if you will, to the Black Lives Matter movement. You have the grassroots piece, you've got the piece that deals with chapters, you've got the foundation, you've got all of this. So here's the first thing that comes out, and, and, and I have been saying this. First, if Patrice left in May of 2021, so right now, who is the leader of the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation? That person should be speaking. That person should be leading. Who is he? Why isn't he out here? You also should have, and I've said this to Patrice and others. Remember when I had Patrice on the show and she was, she was, she was telling me like all these different parts, I was confused. I think part of the problem here, Teresa, a huge part of this is communication. And that is getting people to understand the multiple pieces that make up black, the, the so-called Black Lives Matter movement. The problem, matter of fact, it happened, it happened, there was a news story, there were some activists in Boston who were indicted for misuse of funds. The headline said BLM activists. Well, in the article, it said that one of the groups that gave them money was the Black Lives Matter chapter. So what has happened is media now just calls everybody BLM. If you black and protesting, you Black Lives Matter. If you actually wear a shirt that says Black Lives Matter, go up, oh, yep, you BLM. As opposed to understanding there's a structure as an organization. And I think one of the things that they have to do is lay out. So right now, who is the foundation? Who leads it? Who's on the board? Who the trustees? And then what do they support? And then the other aspects, who leads them? Who's over it? What do they do? What are they involved in? It can't just sort of be, it's all lumped in together. You're absolutely right because um, Black Lives Matter has been in uh, the news for a whole ton of scrutiny, right? And it's unfortunate because the movement, once scrutiny happens, you know, public opinion also comes in to, uh, to also discourage other individuals who want to support the movement. And so we can't get distracted by this. And thus, you're right, a communications plan, some goals, some guidelines, some, some points of interest would actually help. Um, to have a better understanding of the roles and operations and how monies are being spent, like any other normal nonprofit. Um, the checks that has been written to Black Lives uh, Matter organization does go to one organization. So there may be, you know, Black Lives Matter movement, Black Lives Matter, uh, other chapters and other names. But if the solid foundation, I would say it's the umbrella nonprofit organization, was very clear about who they are. Uh, well, I think they're clear about who they are, but um, just some of those roles and responsibilities and, and where some of their influence actually um, goes to and what causes they support and what missions, you know, they, they've actually um, participated in, then I think, you know, some of the headliners um, wouldn't be just a clickbait um, for individuals that is looking to destroy this big organization. The, th the thing here, um, Mustafa, um, is that um, one of the things that they were doing was, um, and we discussed this before on the show, they were literally trying to create an organization after the horse had already left the barn. I mean, they, they were I mean, it was like, you, you're now trying to get control of this thing uh, because it just took off. And, and you've had all different growing pains. But the thing that I have said is, again, who does what? Who is over what? If something, happened right, something happens right now, who can I call? Here's the problem. 
The problem is, if you're asking right now, um, so, so here's this, this story right here. Um, in an email statement on April 1st, uh, do y'all, y'all still seeing this here? No, you're not. Um, let me see if I can pull it back on. Uh, give me one second. Let me set the screen mirroring. Uh, see if I can pull it back up. Uh, you still should be okay. This is this is this article from the, from uh, New York. In an email statement on April 1st, Shaloma ba- Bowers, a BLM GNF board member, um, said the organization bought campus with the intention for it to serve as housing and studio space for recipients of the Black Joy Creators Fellowship. Okay, blah blah blah. All right. So here's the deal, Mustafa. I don't know who the hell Shaloma Bowers is. I've never had Shaloma Bowers on this show. I dare say to Shaloma Bowers, you might want to come talk to black media so we even know who the hell you are. And then you're a board member. Who are the other board members of the foundation? Who's the chair of the board? That's leadership. Leadership is not letting the person who left still do the talking. It's about structure, it's about transparency, and it's also about accountability. And I remember us talking about that, you know, quite a while ago now, about, you know, people will come uh, into this new moment and say, well, we don't really have to have the structure. You know, we want to make sure that there's real fluidity and and all these other types of things that, that have value. But when it comes down to being able to be accountable for the actions that are going on. And as you said, there's someone who has to be able to be that individual for that particular part um, who can speak and who can educate folks on who the organization is um, and, and what is going on in that space. And when you don't have that, then you leave these gaps in your process that make you vulnerable. And we know those who would like to deconstruct our organizations and the good work that happens, they look for where the gaps um, in in what they have there, and then they will manipulate those. So, you know, it's not just for what's going on here in in relationship to Black Lives Matter. It is for all the new important organizations that will come into being to just really remember that you've got to have that structure. You've got to have the transparency. You've got to have the accountability. And you have to continually educate folks on the good work that you're doing and who you are. You know, this is, it, look, we, we, we know, Demario, how black organizations have often been attacked historically. What I have always said to, to, I said to a lot of young activists in the wake of Michael Brown and George Floyd, I said, keep your financial house in order because that is how they got Al Capone and that's how they're going to go after anybody black. And so when they start raising questions about the money, that's what seeds, that's what sows seeds of discontent and causes even black folks to start questioning. And I need also need to caution black people. Be very mindful of the sources that you're reading, promoting information, because you have to also understand some media outlets have an agenda themselves to take out BLM. Well, that's what I was going to say. Look, as a founder and executive director of a 501c3 uh, nonprofit, I understand, as Mustafa stated, you need to be transparent, you know, have accountability processes in place. And as they talked about, you know, filing your 990s, which ours are, you know, we're doing all of that. So I'm happy to know that we won't be in this situation. But we cannot for, for, for forget what Malcolm X taught us. To paraphrase that the media, particularly the white media, will have those who are who are our friends, have us hating those who are our friends and loving those who are our open enemy. So while this organization has some issues, maybe have some growing pains, I'm still skeptical anytime white media comes in to try to dis, um, disregard and bring ill repute on a black organization that is trying to push forward a narrative to stop people from killing us. At the end of the day, what the Black Lives Matter movement is about is the same what we all want on this show for police officers and the state, the government, because the police is just an arm of the government, shooting down our brothers and sisters in the street with impunity. That is what we must stay focused on. That is what matters, right? Stopping these people from shooting and killing us and then making sure those who have experienced this police government violence, that they have the very, very best legal 
counsel, the very best emotional, uh, mental therapy, the very best opportunity to try to move past or try to heal the wounds that come from you, have someone killed by police violence, particularly in such a public way as Mike Brown, as Terrence Crutcher, as uh, Sandra Bland, as George Floyd. The list goes on and on and on. So I think we should all stay real focused on what is the real goals of these organizations and who benefits the most by undermining black organizations. And as the sister stated about you know, the fear that she has from white supremacy and death threats as someone who has you know, received death threats, I understand that is a real deal. And you have to find a way, Roland, as you always say, to not be scared, but it does not mean it's not a reality. So we have to keep all that in mind as we look at these stories coming from these so-called mainstream media outlets. Well, and again, I, I've I've had, look, we've had Melina Abdullah, who's over the grassroots portion of Black Lives Matter on this show. We've had Patrice Cullors on this show. We've had Leisha Garza, another co-founder who's no longer affiliated with BLM. But let me say this here. If you are a Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation leader, you should be talking to black media. You should be talking to black media. You should be talking to black owned media. You should be talking to black journalists who under, who, so that way you're communicating what's going on. And so that should happen. And so again, to Shaloma Bowers, again, I don't know who that is. I, have, I don't recall meeting this person. Uh, who else, whoever else is on the board, y'all getting killed, killed on the media side. Y'all might want to start playing some offense because right now the defense is looking bad. And you cannot have the person who left still out here being the leading voice because that simply gives, a, just, it just makes no sense. The person who's gone can't talk about what you're doing right now because they're not there. I'm just saying. All right, folks, back to our Roland Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. Folks, Black Star Network is here. A real um, revolutionary right now. <laughs> Support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. Uh, thank you for being the voice of Black America, Roland. I love y'all. All momentum we have now, we have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black Owned Media and something like CNN. You can't be Black Owned Media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig? Thank <laughs> you.